Many people have been confused with the phrase forgiveness of taxes. But remember this. There is no forgiveness of the second installment of your 1942 federal income tax. This installment must be paid by midnight tonight. So be sure to put your check in the mail before that time. This is the Man in Black, here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Heading our Hollywood cast is a young lady known simply as Margot, whose talent for the art of suspense has been heard before on this series. Tonight, Margot, using the name of Jacqueline Blaine, tells of strange happenings on a dude ranch, including the hurried and unexplained departure of an important guest. Appearing with Margot is Mr. Kent Smith, a newcomer to our microphone, as Gil Blaine, a young man forced by unrelenting circumstances into many odd and mysterious actions. Margot will soon be seen in Behind the Rising Sun, and Ken Smith is currently appearing in This Land is Mine, both RKO Radio Productions. The story by Cornell Woolrich called Last Night is tonight's tale of suspense. If you have been with us on these Tuesday nights, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, stir your nerves to offer you a precarious situation and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so it is with the last night and the performances of Margot and Ken Smith, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense. Miss Blaine! Miss Blaine! It's late. Ain't you thinking on getting up at all? Huh? Oh, oh yes. Oh. I'll be down in a minute, Leona. Go away now. I lay there looking up at the ceiling. Strange, I, I hadn't slept well last night. All night I had tossed and turned. Worry. That's what it was. Worry. The weekend was over and Gil and I hadn't raised the $2,500. We were right back where we started from. Stuck here in the Hudson Valley with our dude ranch that wasn't paying expenses. And the debt piling up like new snow. That was Gil in the shower. I lay still and listened to the hiss of the water. Poor Gil. It had been a tough weekend for him trying to be nice to Mr. Burroughs, neglecting the other guests to play up to him, flattering him, agreeing with everything he said. What was the use? I knew he'd never lend us the money. I knew it from the first. I never even wanted to invite him and his secretary up, but Gil had pinned his hopes on it. He'd worked so hard. <laughs> worked. Funny word to apply to it. Maybe if Gil had done some real work now and then and said... Morning, Jackie. Morning. Well, how did you make out? How did you make out with Mr. Burroughs? Gil, I'm talking to you. Is he still here? Who? Mr. Burroughs. Oh, no, he left. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to say goodbye to him. I got pretty tired of being nice to him, didn't you? Yeah. Took the 8 o'clock train? 8 o'clock. He took the milk train. The milk train? How do you know? Well, I drove him to the station. That's how I know. Well, what were you doing up at that hour? Well, I... I hadn't come to bed yet, that's all. But what got into him? The milk train, why... That hits here about 4.30 in the morning, doesn't it? About? Well, I can't get it into my head why they should bolt off like that. They? He went alone. His secretary's still here. You mean he... He left without Marsh? Yeah. Marsh was up in his room sleeping at the time. I guess Burroughs didn't want to wait for him. He went off and left his secretary behind? Well, now, 
that's the strangest thing I ever heard of. Why did he bring him in the first place? You... You had a row with him, Gil. He turned you down and you... You let it get the best of you. I did not. That's why he suddenly decided to leave like that. I did not, I tell you. Why should I say I didn't if I did? Oh, I don't know. Everything is so mixed up. Gil, dear, want to toss me my dressing gown? It's on the chair there. Oh, here you are, honey. Oh, oh. Jackie? Yes? Jackie, I got it out of him. What? I got the 2500 <laughs> Gil. He, uh, he finally gave in when I was driving him to the station. Well, you got all of it? The works. I didn't think he would. I mean, the way he was acting. Yes, I know, I know, but uh, he, he began to soften up after you'd gone to bed. When I asked him, he came through. But, Gil, you mean, you mean he carries that much cash around with him? Well, there it is, isn't it? That's funny. You know, he came to me only yesterday and asked me where he could cash a $25 check. Oh, yes, I know about that. I cashed it for him. But the $2,500? Well, he, he had that all ready for deposit when he got back to town Monday. He couldn't get it to the bank on time on Friday. Oh. He, he didn't want to touch it, but when I told him I'd rather have cash than the check, well, he just went the whole way and accommodated me. Well, uh, if there wasn't any friction... Why did he leave at such an unearthly hour? I don't know. But, Gil... And I don't care. Oh, look, baby. We got the money. Let's just be thankful. Well, of course I'm thankful. It's just that... Miss Blaine! Miss Blaine! Yes, Leona? Well, just about to give you two up. Miss Rose and Mr. Carmen's almost finished with the breakfast. Ain't you two coming? Yes, in a minute, Leona. Come on, Gil. Let's hurry. It's hard enough to get paying guests without neglecting the ones we have. Well, I done fixed up Mr. Burroughs' room while I was waiting for Mr. you. Mr. Burroughs' room, but... You didn't but... have to bother. He won't be using it anymore. He won't? No, he left. You don't left? Why, yes. Leona, what's the matter? Then what about all them suits and things you left hanging up in the closet? His clothes? Left in the closet? What about that, Gil? Well, he... He left in an awful hurry, that's all. Oh, leave me alone. Don't let's talk about it. All right. But somehow, I feel that something very strange happened last night. That's what happened, Mr. Rubles. I told him I wouldn't take any more stuff from him. Next time he tries it, it'll be too bad for him. Here comes Gil and Jackie. Yeah. Have some more eggs, Carmen? Oh, I, uh... oh hello, Gil. Oh, hello, Jackie. Gil. Oh, what morning. are you two so chummy about? Why, we were just talking uh, about Mr. Burroughs. Mr. Burroughs? Why, yes. Mr. Carmen had an appointment to play golf with him today. Golf? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fine player. Fine player. Oh, uh, by the way, where is he? I haven't seen him all morning. He's, uh, he, he's not here. Not here? Well, what do you mean? He's left. He left? Yes, can't a guy leave if he wants to? Sure, sure I do. Well, for one, I'm glad he was an old goat. <laughs> He's mad because he made a pass at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't like him too well either, Carmen. You see, Carmen had a run-in with him back in the days of bootleg gin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about it. Gil's right. Mr. Burroughs is gone. Let's forget it. What's this? Oh, Mr. Mars. What did you say about Mr. Burroughs leaving? Do we have to go through this again? Gil, please. Mr. Burroughs left on an early train. Well, you're joking. No, no, I'm not. But I don't understand. Well, you're his secretary. You ought to know what he's going to do. That's right, Gil. I should know. That's why it's so strange. He told me we definitely were going to stay until this afternoon. Well, he, uh, he changed his mind. Blaine, Frank. Oh, yes, and she's here. Just a minute. Miss Blaine, telephone. Call me. Hello. Mrs. Blaine? Yes? This is Mrs. Burroughs. Oh, how do you do? 
Uh, we were awfully sorry you couldn't come out with Mr. Burroughs for the weekend. I'm sure you'd have I enjoyed it. I think it was most inconsiderate of Homer not to let me know he was staying over an additional day. And you can tell him so for me. I think the least he could have done was phone me or send a wire. But Mrs. Burroughs... I don't doubt he finds it attractive up there. Mrs. Burroughs, wait a minute. He, he isn't here anymore. He did leave early this morning. Early this morning? What do you mean? Well, he took an early train. Uh, he should have been in at... Uh, now, let me see. At 8.30 this morning. 8.30? 8... Eight. Well, well, then where is he? Why hasn't he come? Well, maybe he went directly to his office. Oh, no, I called his office. They haven't heard from him. You see, that's why I'm calling you. Oh, I don't understand all this. It, it does seem that Marsh would at least get in touch Marsh? with me. Marsh? Well, uh, Marsh is still here, Mrs. Burroughs. Marsh is still there? Yes. He went off without Marsh? Oh, oh, now I know there's something wrong. Why, he's never done that before. Please, please, Mrs. Burroughs. I, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. He's just... Well, uh, I, I'd better let you talk to Marsh. Well, yes. Yes, please, please get him. Mr. Marsh, Mr. Marsh, Mrs. Burroughs is on the phone. She wants to talk to you. Better take the extension in the front room. All right. She's very upset. We have to calm her. Hello, Mrs. Burroughs. Marsh is coming. Oh, something's wrong. I know it. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Burroughs. Oh, Marsh, is that you? Yes. Marsh, did you know Mr. Burroughs was going to leave? No, he didn't say anything to me. Well, Mrs. Blaine says he's left. Should have been here, and he isn't. Well, uh, I don't... He, uh... he probably was just delayed. Oh, no, no. Something's happened. Charles, uh, uh, Marsh, he, he had that, um, th- that important package in his inside pocket. He did? Yes. Oh, I don't know what to do. Shall I call the police? The police? Well, that's not necessary. Uh, Mrs. Blaine's right. Uh, let me take care of it. I'll wait a few hours, and if he hasn't shown up by oh, then... all right. Do what you think best. Hello? Hello? Well, she hung out, Mrs. Blaine. Important packet. The $2,500. The 2500 Gilgot. Oh, Gil. <laughs> That was Mrs. Burroughs. She was awfully upset. Well, Burroughs didn't show up. Uh, she wants me to call the police. The police? Oh, now, wait a minute. You don't have to call the police. Well, why shouldn't I call the police? After all, Mr. Burroughs is missing. Oh, he may show up yet? Certainly, he may show up yet. Carmen's right. You don't have to call the police now. And why don't you want the police? Well, why... There's uh, something strange here, all right. Why didn't Mr. Burroughs say a word to me about leaving? Well, you were asleep. I, I guess he didn't want to waken you. Oh, I've never known him to be considerate in my life. I suppose he knew what he was doing. I'm not so sure. What do you mean? Well, if he knew what he was doing, why did he leave his return ticket on the dresser? A strange silence fell over the entire group. Marsh was suspicious. Soon he would call the police. And I had a strong feeling that Gil knew more about this than he let on. After breakfast, the group broke up, and I stayed to help Leona clear the table, and I saw Gil and Carmen walk out on the porch together. Cigarette, Gil? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Here. Yeah, fine morning. So you didn't ask me out here to speak about the weather. No. No, I didn't. I want the money you owe me. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was due long ago. With the interest, it adds up to 2500 I can't pay you now. Why not? You said you'd pay it today. Well, it's not that I haven't got it. It's... It's what? Well, it's... Well, everything's so mixed up now. You know... You mean Burroughs, disappearance? Look, give me another 24 hours. I'd like to, Gil, but... Gil, Gil! Shh, here comes Jackie. All right, 24 hours and no more. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting something important. Oh, no, no. We're just talking about the weather. It is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I better get up to the golf course. Oh, say, Gil, could you lend me the car to drive up? It's pretty far, and I'll do plenty of walking when I get there. Well, as a matter of fact, Carmen, I'm uh, going to use it myself. Oh. Well, in that case, I'd better start walking. So long. Goodbye. He was after the money, wasn't he? Yeah. But I didn't give it to him. Why not? Mr. Burroughs gave it to you, and 
We do owe it to Carmen. Can't you leave me alone for a minute? Say, you two, why the frown? Hello, Miss Robles. I don't want to interrupt a private fight, so I'll state my business quickly. How about lending me the car, Gil? I want to drive I'm in... sorry, Miss Robles, but I need it. I'm, I'm driving into town. And right now... <laughs> Gil drove off. The rest of the day went by in a haze. Gil didn't come back. He stayed away all day without even phoning me. He had never done that before. It almost seemed as though he avoided me intentionally. Toward evening, as I was putting the finishing touches on dinner, Leona came up to me. There's a man here to see you, Miss Blaine. Where is he? In the front room. Well, uh, who is it? Somebody I ain't never seen before. All right, I'll talk to him. Uh, you look after things here, Leona. Yes, I will. Good evening. My name's Ward. I'm Mrs. Blaine. Uh, you wanted to see me? I wanted to have a few words with Mr. Blaine. Oh, I see. What was it about? You know what it's about. It's about Burroughs. His office sent me down. Mr. Burroughs? Uh, what about him? He was a guest here, wasn't he? Yes. When did he leave? Last night. My husband drove him to the station. Really? How interesting. What do you mean? We happen to know that he never got on that train. Oh. I thought maybe your husband could tell me a few things I'd like to know. I'll see if he's here. Just a moment. I'd also like to see some of the other guests. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, nobody's here just now. Miss Robles is out walking, and Mr. Carmen hasn't... Carmen. Carmen. A short, fat Italian. Why, yes. How did you know? Mr. Burroughs always ran into him before. Now I'd like to see your husband. Please sit down. I'll see if I can find him. Thank you. Leona, Leona. Yes, Miss Blaine? Has Mr. Gill come back yet? Oh, no, ma'am. I ain't seen him since he drove off this morning. I see. Well, uh, tell the gentleman to wait. I'm going out on the veranda. I went out on the veranda. Up and down the length of the porch and back again I walked. My eyes glued to the dark highway that ran past the house. Hoping against hope that Gil would show up before the detective came looking for me. Gil had the 2500 on him. Burroughs' cash. That important package Mrs. Burroughs spoke of to Marsh. I had to see Gil first, and... Suddenly, I, I saw a car speeding down the road. Gil's car. I could tell by the one dim headlight. It tore through the dark at top speed. Then swerved through our gate and into the garage. I was about to run down the steps when... Another pair of headlights split the gloom of the highway. As the car came on, I recognized the taxi from town. A figure climbed out quickly. Gil! Jackie, did you see the car? Our car? Yes, Gil. It, it, it went toward the garage. Who was driving it? Well, I, I couldn't see. What is it, Gil? Are you in... No time to talk. No time to talk. Where are you going? The garage. I'm coming with you. <laughs> the doors are closed. Ah, there. Nobody here. Anyone in the car? No. Whoever it was beat it. Oh. I'd like to know who it was. Gil, I don't understand what this is all about. Well, frankly, I don't either. I, well, that is, I was parked in front of the store in town. I came out and saw somebody hop in my car and drive off like mad. That's odd. I don't know what he was after. But I don't think he got it. I chased the car all the way here in the taxi. I saw it coming down the road. I thought it was you. Well, let's go back to the house. Gil. Yes? Gil, there's somebody here to see you. A man named Ward. Ward? Who's he? What does he want? He wants to talk to you about Burroughs. He's a detective. Oh. And, uh... You'd better let me have the wallet with the money, just to be on the safe side. Now, look, I don't want you mixed up in anything. Well, I'll be all right. Please, give it to me. Well, okay. Now you'll have to go in and talk to him. Yeah, I suppose so. I went up to my room and lay there in the dark, 
trying to distinguish the murmur of voices from below. But all I could hear was a blur of sound. I got the 25,000. Something happened. The next time it'll be too bad for him. He made a pass at me. He's not in a hurry. Let me alone. Jackie, you awake? Yes. Here, sit down, Gil. You look tired. Yeah, I am. Very. What did Ward say? Not much, but I know he's suspicious. He's going to stay tonight. Oh. Well, let's get to bed. I'm tired. Oh. Oh, by the way, did did you see the key to the rumble seat? The key to the rumble seat? I know. Uh, uh, Must have lost it. (sighs) Good night. Gil, you've never told me. You've never told me one way or the other. Gil, you've got to tell me. (sighs) All right. All right, Jackie. I will. Burroughs never gave me the 2500 He refused me. We quarreled, and I was mad. I suppose he was afraid of me, afraid of what I might do to him. Anyway, that's why he left so suddenly. Made me drive him to the station. Did you see him get on the train? No, I left him at the station. Left my car there and walked down the street. I was sore, but I had to think. I heard the train come and go. And when I went back, Burroughs was gone. I got in the car and drove home. And the 2500 Well, I lied when he said he had that cash. Then where did you get it? Remember the $25 check I cashed for him? Yes. I added two zeros after the 25 Oh, Gil. I wrote in the word hundred. There was a space for it made to order. Then I cashed it. Gil, Gil. Oh, I know I'm low, Jackie, but I didn't kill him. I didn't. Then what became of him? Where is he? I don't know. I wish I did. What's that? Somebody's out there. Whoever it is is trying to open the garage door. I, I can't see who it is. It's not a woman. Not Miss Robles. I can see that much. It could be Carmen. What are you doing in that drawer? Just getting this gun. Now, quiet. No, Gil. Give me that gun. You can't shoot anybody in the dark like that. Please, Jackie. I'm going to turn on the lights. Don't, Jackie. Yes, Gil. Now, he's running away. Gone. Who was it? I couldn't see. Could you? No, Gil. Well, now it just means waiting until the next time. Oh, Jackie, what am I going to do? I don't know, dear, but we'll get out of it somehow. How? I'm, I'm all mixed up. There's one clear thing. Somebody is awfully interested in that car. I lay awake until the sun was up. Then a shallow, feverish sleep came. And when I awoke, it was almost evening. Gil's bed was empty. There were the indistinct sounds of life in the house below. I rose, and as my mind cleared, my words of the night before broke through the edges of my consciousness. There's one clear thing. Somebody is awfully interested in that car. I dressed slowly. A tantalizing thought hovered just beyond my grasp. The car. What was there about the car? I slowly walked down the hallway, my eyes half closed, thinking I had to talk to Gil. Leona? Leona? Yes, sir? Uh, where's Mr. Gill? Oh, he done went to town with Mr. Ward. He went with Ward? Yes, sir, right after breakfast. Mr. Carmen gave him a lift down and... Carmen? Oh, uh, yes, but Mr. Gill, he done left you this note. Oh, let me see it. Jackie, I've gone downtown with Ward. I'm going to tell him... Up, tell him about the check. And whatever happens will have to happen. No, Gill... No, Gil, no. Jacqueline. Leona, I've got to stop him. I'm going to drive to town. I've got to get 
there for four kills. Mrs. Blaine. Uh, Mrs. Blaine, uh, uh, where are you going? I'm going to town, Mr. Marsh. Oh, may I come along? Well, I, uh... Oh, I, I suppose so. Hurry up and get in. you don't mind me driving so fast, I'm in a terrible hurry. No. Pull down the next side road. What? I said pull down the next side road. A gun? Yes, a gun. Now do as I say. There's something in this car I want. I won't. I must get to Gil. Let go of that wheel. Let go of that wheel. I said there's something here I want. There's a car coming. Let go. <laughs> 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 I tried to move. Miraculously, we were alive. The other car had careened beyond us up the road. I saw that the side was smashed in. Then I heard Marsha's voice. I ought to kill you for this. That was a police car. Keep your mouth shut. Here he comes now. Now remember, there's a gun pointing at your back. Hey, you maniacs. What's the idea? You're trying to kill somebody? Oh, sorry, officer. We... Having a little trouble with the steering wheel. Well, you won't have any more trouble with it. This is the end of your license. Oh, see here, officer. I'm in a terrible hurry. If you if you let me drive to the station... Ah, I'll... wait a minute, buddy. Let's have your name. What's yours? Come on. Uh, Marsh. Charles Marsh. Oh, Marsh. Uh, what's yours, lady? This is Gilbert Blaine. Uh, and, uh, and yours? Well, come on. What's yours? What's your name? Who are you talking to? That guy in the rumble seat. The rumble seat? Mr. Burroughs. <laughs> Burroughs, is it? Well, why don't you say so? Hey, what are you, a wise guy sitting there like a mummy? Come on, answer me, will you? I just... hey, wait a minute. This guy's dead. You did this. The rumble seat flew open when we crashed. Officer, he's got a gun. He murdered that man. I'm warning you. Keep back or I'll... Oh. That takes care of him. We're all right now, sister. Yes. I'm all right now. Well, that job's finished. Nothing left for me to do but go back to town. So it was Marsh after all. Yeah. I don't understand why. He was contemplating a change from secretary to husband. Naturally, with Mr. Burroughs dead, Mrs. Burroughs would inherit all the money. I see. Marsh followed Gill and Mr. Burroughs that night to the station. When Gill was gone, he killed Burroughs, stuffing him into the rumble seat, locked it, and kept the key. Well, the thing I don't understand is why Marsh kept fiddling with the car. What was it that he wanted? Seems to me he was in the clear if he left well enough alone. Uh-huh. That's what tripped him up. Remember when he talked to Mrs. Burroughs on the phone? They said something about an important package? Well, yes. I assumed it to be the 2500 Gill told me about. But, of course, it wasn't. There was a package of letters that Mr. Burroughs had gotten hold of. I get it. Those letters were written by Marsh to Mrs. Burroughs. Right. And they would incriminate him. He found out about them after the murder. Right again. Oh. He had to get them to make it perfect. Well, I guess I'll shove off. So long, and uh, thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, you may want to deposit, uh, oh, say, $2,500 to Mr. Burroughs' account. Yeah, I uh, see what you mean. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Jackie? Yes? Our debts, there's still $2,500 that have to come from somewhere. Mm Mm-hmm. We went a long way around to get right back where we started from. We come through all that trouble and end up broke. Yes, darling. That's the way it ends. And so closes the story called Last Night, starring Margot and Kent Smith. Tonight's tale of... Suspense. 
This is your narrator, the man in black, who conveys to you Columbia's invitation to spend this half hour in suspense with us again next Tuesday when John Sutton and George Zuko will star in the suspense play by John Dixon Carr called The Man Without a Body. The producer of these broadcasts is William Spear, who with Ted Bliss, the director, Lud Gluskin, and Lucian Mahowick, conductor and composer, and Cornell Woolrich, the author, collaborated on tonight's Suspense. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.